We are a chosen generation Call for the show is excellence All I require All I require for life God has given me And I know who I am We are We are a chosen generation Call for to show his excellence All I require All I require for life God has given me And I know who I am I know who God says I am Where he says I am Where he says I am I know who I am I know who God says I am We are a chosen generation Call for to show his excellence All I require for life God has given me And I know who I am We are a chosen generation Call for to show his excellence all I require for life, God has given me, and I know who I am. I know who God says I am, where he says I am, where he says I'm at. I know who I am, I know who God says I am, where he says I am, where he says I'm at. I know who I am, I'm walking in power. Hearts that will hear your message this morning. 
Let each word that is going to be sown this morning find fertile ground in our hearts, O Lord. Amen. Do not let us be here as alone, but do as it are. At the end of this message, Father, let us get closer to you. Give us that knowledge, give us that open mindedness, Father Almighty, to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. We thank you, O Lord. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, Father, we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning, church. Can you please open your Bible to Genesis chapter 1? And that's where we have be fruitful and multiply. Genesis chapter 1. And I will be reading from verses 26 to the end. In Genesis chapter 1 from verses 26 to the end. And God said, Let us make man in our own image, after our likeness, and let him have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeped upon the earth. And so God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over everything, every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat, and to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the earth, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat. And it was so. And God saw everything that he has made. And behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning, we are the sixth day. May God bless his holy word. Amen. Amen. As you might have seen in your church pamphlet, the theme for this morning is be fruitful and multiply. Be fruitful and multiply. And if we ask ourselves today, what we think God meant when he said in Genesis verse 28, and God blessed them, be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. I am sure most of us will confidently say, go into the world and bring up more children. But there are so many issues and questions here that the more you tend to meditate on them, the more compounded the misery of God's work you are trying to understand. Yes, our Lord commanded, be fruitful and multiply. But he also imposed or get some cautionary conditions to Adam and Eve, as we also read in Genesis 2, 16 to 17. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden, thou mayest eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And in Genesis 2, 23 to 25, and they were both naked, the man and his wife, and we are not ashamed. Hallelujah. Uh, this morning, I am going to try and take you a little higher in your knowledge of our mysterious God. We read the Bible every day. We can claim that we do really understand the Bible we are reading. Have you ever bothered to sit down and meditate? What is that forbidden fruit? That after it meet, your eyes will open and you will know the truth. Our God wanted to know if we are worthy 
of the enormous responsibilities and the authorities that he had given us and the double-edged sword that he had placed in our hands. And if we fail, we will then have to walk our way back to perfection through many lifespans of struggle, hard work, suffering, to atone for our imperfections and regain our heritage. What does it mean? The psalmist said in Psalm 51, 5, Behold, I was shaped in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Is there anything hidden from God under the sun? When Satan was tempting our mother Eve, did you think God was not aware and was not able to prevent Satan from tempting Eve? How many times have our faith been tested by God? He will not come down to test our own faith, but make use of any of his creations. You can use your wife, your husband, your friend in school, and even your own children, Abraham's faith was tested. When the Lord asked him to go and sacrifice his son Isaac to him, he obeyed God, and God appreciated him and counted his faith as righteousness for him. As we read in Genesis 21, 1 to 2, and it came to pass. After these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moab, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. The Lord was very pleased with Abraham. And the angel of the Lord sent her this to say in verses 22, verse 12, and he said, Lay not thy hand upon that lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing that thou hast not withheld thy son, that only son, from me. And how did God reward Abraham for such absolute faith, trust, and loyalty to God? Let us see verse 17 to 18. That in blessing I will bless thee. And in multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sun which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. So, when Satan came to tempt our mother Eve, did God not know? Of course he knew. And he also knew when our mother Eve also invited our father Abraham to eat of the forbidden fruit. Have you also tried to meditate on the consequences of their actions? One. Let us see verse 3, chapter 3, verse 7. And the eyes of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they so fig trees together and made themselves aprons. Two, fear. Fear came upon them. When the Lord called, they hid themselves, for they were afraid. And three, verse four, chapter four, verse one to two, and Abraham knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived, and there came, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. Now, let us ask ourselves, or make effort to think, how did Abraham manage to undertake all the responsibilities, all the assignments God gave to him this morning? We are going to go through the lives of the first man and woman we all knew as Adam and Eve. I will have to assume that all our youths must have heard about them to be able to follow me this morning in lessons we are going to learn from their lives and relationship to God. And if there's any one of you among the youth that don't know anything about Adam and Eve, I will probably say this morning, it's a shame on you. Now, the further signing. Give it to Adam was the name to name all the things that he has created. Meaning all living 
and non-living things such as animals, birds, creeping animals, fishes of the waters, plants and fungi, and insects. Only one man to name everything, to give them names. Can you imagine? What the supernatural computer brain God might have given to Adam to name these things and not forget or get one name mixed up with another or how two or three creations bearing the same name. Are you following me? Have you ever seen or heard of the principal of a college or even a pastor of a large church not remembering the names of some of his students or his church members without asking, who do they call you by the way? <laughs> God is really great, isn't he? And then the second assignment given to Adam is to have dominion over all that God had created. Dominion. What does it mean to have dominion? 